Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So in this video, I've actually upgraded some technology and invested in a new microphone. So hopefully you can hear me a lot clearer. And obviously if you do prefer it, please do make sure you give this video a like just so I can see straight away. Uh, hopefully, I've got to say, I had a few comments previously where they're saying like the sound was maybe a bit too low or wasn't that clear. So hopefully this new microphone has rectified that issue. So just to start the video off on a high one. But other than that, we're starting this video uh, still looking at Power BI. So we're continuing our Power BI series. And we're gonna be taking a look at, again, just more ways of working with data within the tool. What I have done is I've created, or well, I've not created a new file, I've just extended um, upon the file we were using previously, so I've just added a lot more data to it. Uh, that will just give us, like I say, more data to be able to play with, and it just makes it a bit more meaningful and like, more content to be able to do stuff with within the Power BI application. So you can find the link to Delan, Delan, to download that file in the uh, description for this video. Uh, and also, if you haven't downloaded the application before or you're new to, obviously, Power BI, we've also retained the link to download the application in the description as well. So you should have anything you need to carry on with, uh, to follow along with what we're doing here today. So what we're gonna just do is we'll start looking about how, or we'll focus this video around playing around with the numbers, uh, specifically within tables. Uh, and the benefit of this is once you've got the idea of how you can use these different ways of displaying numbers, you can apply it to everything and anything uh, when it comes to obviously summarizing data in Power BI. So following on from what we had before, and obviously you'll notice there's a lot more data here and specifically for other countries as well, just rather than the UK. So I'm just gonna move this table over to the side just so we can see a bit clearer. So at the moment, we've got a summary at city level. Uh, all I'm going to do is just get rid of the total units. And actually, I'm going to get rid of city as well. Go back into our locations column and let's just pull country in because it gives a bit of a higher level uh, for working with these numbers. So at the moment, obviously, we're working with country. And you can see, uh, actually, what we could do is, yeah, let's stick with country because we've only got a few here. And then what we've got in this other table, let's just change that to, rather than name, let's put in there city. Uh, and hopefully we'll sort of then start building something meaningful, get rid of the units. Okay, so we can see we've now got two tables. So we've got one for country and one for city. Uh, in both table, the number of sales on the side here is obviously the total sales that was generated for that either country or city. So for France, obviously if we clicked on our France or our total sales over here, you can see that it's now filtered our city table. So we can see that how that, that total of uh, 453,000 is broken down into obviously the values per city. So we can see all the cities that accumulated to give us this total of 543,000. So at the moment, obviously it, it, it gives us the numbers we need, but we want to just try and tidy this up a bit just so the formatting is a bit more correct. What I'm going to do is over the left or the right hand side, should I say, in the sales table, I can just click on the total sales field. And then what I'm going to do is go up to the top here and you can see it's already gone there for us, but we can go into our tools that we've got open here. So I think we've just gone into uh, column tools. And then what I'm going to do is rather than have a whole, well actually we're going to leave it as a whole number, but I want to show a, a monetary amount. So what we can do is we, again, very similar to what we have available to us in Excel, we're able to format obviously the numbers in there. So what we could do, we could either change this to uh, a currency. And if I click that currency drop down, you can see all the currencies I have available. So I'm just gonna change this to English, so United Kingdom. And then as we let that just work its magic, you can see it's all automatically updated the formatting for that field so we can now see it in, like I'll say a currency. If however, we didn't want it in like the currency that we've got there, we could just do it into comma sem separated. What will basically give us the same thing. Oh, if I click it again, uh, if we do basically the same thing, it just won't give us a currency amount. So we have that option as well. And lastly, the ones we'll look at is we've got decimal place. So if I click this decimal place button here, I think it's clicked. Yeah, let's try it one more time. Oh, no, it's not going to work because obviously we've got a whole number. Let's say if we go into a decimal, decimal number, can't speak. And then we want to now go, yeah, great. Thank you very much. And let's say we want to play the decimal places, so let's put one on there. You can see that we can now play around with like decimal places if we had pence in there. But actually the numbers we've got in there are actually whole numbers themselves, so there won't be any decimal numbers to display. But what I want to do is just revert back to the English United Kingdom. Cool, so again, as we said at the start, this number at the moment is just giving us the total number of sales that were generated for the country and the city. 
But let's say rather than looking at um, the actual sales amount, you want to see how many sales were made in each country. So in order to do that, all we need to do is select our required table. And all we need to do is go to total sales and you'll see this little drop down just to the right hand side. If you select that drop down, you can see all the options we have available to us. So we have sum, average, minimum, maximum, count, uh, count distinct, should I say, count, and a couple of others in there as well. So let's say we wanted to count the no total number of sales that we had in France. All we need to do is select the count option, and you can see we've now, oh, if let's move it to the side, we can see we can there was a total of 155 sales in France, what a, a mass to obviously whatever that total was. So if I click France, yeah, we can see there's a total of 155 sales, of which obviously generated that total of 453. Uh, to demonstrate in this uh, city column, what we can do as well, is say we wanted to have obviously that total um, sales amount, as in like the number of the pounds total. We can also bring, we can also duplicate, shall I say, the sales column. So rather than having it in just once, we can bring in total sales twice. So you can see we've got total sales and total sales are currently showing the same. But let's say in this one we wanted to do, as we just now looked at the count, we can do that. And from exactly that same field, so without having to do any other additional fields or trying to do any calculations, we're very a easily able to now generate, okay, total sales and obviously how many sales generated that total. And to be fair, this is actually an easier way of doing it rather than um, what I was doing before by trying to do it separately. So let's move that to the side. And let's maybe just move this and change that back to uh, maybe our sum. And we'll just expand this table, if I can click in it. Yeah, there we go. So you can bring that over so we've got some more space as well. And let's say now, okay, we've got our total sales amount and we've gotten how we know how many sales it took to generate the total sale. Well, what was the actual average sale amount? So obviously within Barcelona, there was obviously a number of sales generated. So what we could do is we can now say, let's bring total sales in again, but this time we're gonna select the average. And you can see that again, we've now got the average number of sales. What in essence is obviously gonna be the total sales divided by the number of sales, but this just gives us the ability to just see that obviously at a quick, again, without having to do any calculations, it's all built in functionality that we have available to us uh, straight out of the box. At the moment, obviously we've got these are two additional um, fields, but it can get a bit complicated but trying to work out uh, well, we can clearly see what each column relates to because we've just done it. But let's say someone's now going on here, they probably aren't going to understand what this is relating to other than obviously the count of total sales. What we can do if we want to rename that column heading is we just go into our applicable field, so count of total sales, click our drop down and then select rename. And now we can call, call it whatever we want to do. So we can say number of sales and hit enter. And you can see it's now updated into that header for us. And if we wanted to do into here, we could go average sale amount or anything that you want to call it. And what happens when you rename these column head or these fields here, it's not applicable to any other uh, table. It's only going to update the column head in, in your particular table you're updating. And obviously it's not going to change or, or affect the actual column header of that field uh, in its actual table where it resides. So we've obviously got these two options here at the moment, what we've looked at of uh, counting the number of sales and how to also look at the average as well. Let's say, however, we wanted to look at the minimum and maximum sale. So what was the smallest sale done in Barcelona and what was the maximum done in Barcelona? We could add more fields, but I'm simply going to just change the ones that we've currently got in here already. So what we're going to do is go number of sales and select minimum and let's go uh, rename um, smallest sale and we'll change the other one to again largest sale <laughs> I think I'll say again lack of words what to think to put there so let's go smallest sale uh, and we did do that yet yeah, we did minimum and let's go into this oh just removed it so I'm just going to do control Z to bring that back and the largest sale should be maximum so we can now see and uh, probably no well no surprise really to myself um, because all these were randomly generated numbers but as you can see they're all fairly similar but again minimum and maximum is another beneficial one that we could be using when we're trying to analyze this data so hope you enjoyed that video uh, it's 
bit of a, well, probably wasn't that short after all actually, but it's just another one to show you a bit more of how to work with data in Power BI. Obviously, this is really benefit, well, I say obviously, Working with tables probably isn't the most uh, visually appealing uh, if you wanted to use charts or your audience is more wanting to see charts, but it's really beneficial to understand how you can use tables to really sort of navigate through your data. As we sort of touched on at the start, the benefit of using two tables like this of uh, different levels in a particular hierarchy, such as location, is it gives you the ability to drill down into each one. So obviously we had countries, so if you want to go into Great Britain, you can go into Great Britain and then straight away see obviously how the sales of Great Britain are broken down. And just straight away, okay, smallest and largest might not be the most interesting to look at this, but you can then start to actually sort of interrogate your data and really understand what the num or what are the numbers behind the graphs. So let's like say, I hope you enjoyed that video, just trying to cover off numbers and formatting in, in particular. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please do subscribe to the channel. And if you enjoyed that video, don't forget to give the video a, a thumbs up. And likewise, if you've got any questions at all, please drop me a comment below this video and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.